everybody everyone this is Trisha and welcome to my channel today I'm going to be doing a witch's hat on a candlestick this is going to be a Halloween craft let me show you what the supplies are going to be so then we can get to crafting for my supplies I'm going to be using two sheets of the stiffy felt right here uh, you can use a uh, fun foam if you don't find a stiffy felt this I found it in my local craft store that they also have it at Walmart Michaels Hobby Lobby Pretty much any craft store you can order this type of item from Amazon. If you don't find this, you can use another item called Fun Foam, and it works just as well for this project. Uh, for my for my witch's hat, I'm going to be putting it on a candlestick. You may choose not to put it on a candlestick, and you can just lay it flat on the table. But if you choose to use a candlestick, and you have one already at home that you want to use, and you're happy with the color and the size of it, awesome, great, then use that. Uh, for in my case, uh, I'm using these two candlesticks that I already had. I'm recycling them from a previous project where I had painted them white. Uh, the reason that I'm using two is because I want it to be a nice high candlestick, which will eventually just basically be the stand of my hat. Okay, so I'm going to put these two together that I bought from the Dollar Tree. They were clear before. Like I said, I painted them white for another project, and now I've spray painted them black. So if you go this route... Uh, you'll need to get some spray paint and of course uh, we'll need some good glue that you can use for glass and you can use an E6000, an Elmer's glue I'm sorry, um, not an Elmer's glue, but a super glue you know anything, any glue that is good for glass and just follow the directions on how to adhere it and how long to wait for that to dry for the purposes of my video because I take things apart you're going to see me using a glue gun to put these candlesticks together. I don't recommend that you do that. I recommend that you use a good glue to put them together because it will fall apart with just the hot glue. And like I said, I take I take things apart. So that's what you're gonna see me use. Okay, I'm gonna decorate my witch's hat. So I've got some items in this little basket here. Now, because I'm gonna put my hat on a uh, candlestick, I'm choosing to use some styrofoam. So I need some scrap, styrofoam that you happen to have, little pieces, little squares. Or little, I have this little ball that I could use or half a ball that I could use. I happen to have this nice good uh, type of styrofoam that's also really good for this project. And we can just cut whatever we have to size uh, when we do put it together. Now, like I'm telling you that you don't have to use this if you don't want to decorate it the way that I do. But just, uh, just so you know, you're going to follow along with what I'm doing. You'll need a scrap of styrofoam. Okay, so I'm also going to be using some decorative mesh. Decorative mesh is this right here. Let me take that out. We're going to be using this type of uh, mesh to decorate. I'm going to be using blacks and some purple to decorate mine. So I've chosen that. I'm also going to be using some tulle. And I have some purple here. I have a black with a purple web on it. And I have a black with a silver web. And a little bit more black. It's a little, I mean, a little more purple. It's a little different from that one because these are leftover pieces, that, uh, rolls that I already had open. I'm going to start with them. And then I've got some new ones here if I need to use that. I'm also going to use some leftover ribbons from an, another project as well. So I've got these from the Dollar Tree. You can use any ribbon from wherever you want. Uh, you can use uh, not as wide as this. You can use uh, half the size of this or maybe even thinner ribbons. It all depends and you can use whatever combination of ribbons you want to use in your witch's hat. I'm also going to decorate my hat a little bit. So I had this little leftover pumpkin. This was on a little pick. It came in a package from the Dollar Tree. I think there was like five of them in the package. I don't recall. And I just happen to have this left over, so I'm going to use that one. It doesn't even have, you know, perfect eyes because it has a little bit of a defect here. I don't care. And this is just a little plastic ring, you know, that you could also buy in a little packet from the Dollar Tree. You can find this pretty much anywhere that they sell Halloween decorations. I've seen them at Walmart, um, at Hobby Lobby, etc. You can pretty much find them anywhere. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut off this little ring part from my spider. You might find spiders that don't have a little ring. It's up to you how you, how you, how you want to use that or what you want to use to decorate your hat. Okay, I also purchased these the string light from the Dollar Tree. It's an LED string light. And I've gone ahead and I've already put a battery on it. And I've turned it on. And it doesn't really have much of a lumen to it. It's kind of here and there in some spots. In some spots it's just like little 
little sparkly little very tiny little dots of light um, but if I look at the picture on here it pretty much kind of looks like that in the picture so I feel like well that's probably the way it's supposed to be and maybe in the dark it looks a lot better uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use it and see how that looks on my hat you don't have to use any lights at all if you don't want to okay we're gonna be needing some uh, chenille stems these are pipe cleaners these are 12 inch length pipe cleaners so you can just use floral wire and cut pieces to whatever size you want what I do is I cut these in half and then in half again so I end up with four pieces that are about three inches long each they're not perfectly measured just cut them however you want you just need some little pieces and you're gonna need lots of those okay we're also going to be using um, a measuring stick or measuring tape. I have a little piece of chalk to do some little markings. You can use whatever you want to use. I've got some glue sticks here for my glue gun, wire cutters, and my scissors. If I think of anything else that I might want to pull out, I'll just let you know what it was that I'm using. I may even not even use all of this. Okay, so that's it for the supplies, so let's get to crafting. Okay, the first thing we want to do is prep our candlesticks. Now, if you already have a candlestick in the size and color that you want, you don't need to do any painting or any gluing together of any pieces, then you can skip this part. But if you do have a couple of little candle holders that you want to put together, then this is where you want to go ahead and get your E6000, your Gorilla Glue, or your Super Glue, anything that's good for glass, and go ahead and follow the instructions on the tube of glue and glue the two parts together. What I did is I take the two smaller parts and I'm going to glue those together. And the reason that I chose that is because this wider part obviously makes a better base than the thinner part up here. Uh, by the way, I didn't glue them perfectly well together, so <laughs> this gives me a good chance to actually take them apart and do it correctly. And then the top part here that's also wide, it makes a good base for my piece of styrofoam. Or like I said, if you don't want to use a styrofoam and you just want to put the hat on here and decorate it in a different way than what I'm going to do, then you just have, you're just going to glue the hat right onto the surface and you don't need anything here. Okay, I'm going to take mine apart and I'm going to show you that it's, it's actually a pretty good hold. I had to pull on it really hard, but it gets easier as it cools off and the glass gets cold again and of course if it ages it is going to be super easy for it to fall apart so that's why you don't want to do, use just a hot glue gun okay let me attempt this again and line them up because that was something very important is that you do want to line them up so let's get plenty of glue and I like for, to put it towards the inside that way if it does drip it'll drip inside and not on the outside but we may get some that does uh, okay, so now I'm going to line them up <laughs> and put them together. And it just seems like such a great hold, but really and truly it's not. So make sure you use the right kind of glue. So this candlestick, put it aside, wait whatever time it needs for that to dry, come back and do the rest of your craft. Okay, so here I've got this uh, piece of stiff felt. And what I want to do... Let me measure. This is 12. I think it's 18 inches. Yeah, 12 and 6 is 18 inches. So, um, and then across this way, it is 12 inches. So, it is a 12 by 18. So, I want to make a square out of this. So, I'm actually going to measure 12 inches. And this is where I'm going to use my chalk. Okay, so we're going to measure 12 inches. 12 inches. I'm just, you don't have to mark it this many times. I just do because it kind of helps me. And then I'm going to get all of these little markings aligned and then just mark it. And I'm using chalk because it's, you know, you can, you know, wipe it off easily with a little damp cloth. Okay, now that I've marked it, I can go ahead and cut my, and I want to have a square for my, to cut out a circle. And I want to make the brim of my hat, which this is going to be the brim of my hat. I want to make it as big as I can. So I'm using the whole 12 inches. Now, I'm going to use a chalk again just to show you what I like to do. Is I like to go for like from the middle. If you want to go ahead and mark it six inches. We'll mark 
it six inches. Now I don't do this perfectly. I don't do a perfect circle. If you happen to have you maybe a plate or something that falls within the diameter here, use that to trace around uh, to create your circle. Um, I don't have that and I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to just use my chalk and just kind of round off a corner from this six inch to this six inch. No, that don't mark the chalk wasn't marking very well. So I'm just gonna mark it like that. Okay? And I can go around and do the same thing here or here, here, here. But what I can also do is I can also just cut out. Let me go ahead and put this in a angle that I can cut. Is just cut out this in one piece and then use that same little piece that you cut out to align it to the edge, then the other corner, and then you can just mark it. And then cut out that, and then do the same for these two other corners. And I'm kind of cutting on the outside of the chalk line, because I want to make this circle as big as I possibly can. And then like I said, you could just wipe this off, you can use a little damp piece of napkin, or you know, pretty much comes off like that. Okay, so I'm going to cut these two other corners and I'll be back. Alright everyone, so there's my circle that I've cut out. And I actually have this piece left over so I can save that little scrap for another project. Now I'm going to take this other one. This is where it's going to get a little tricky. And sometimes it gets a little bit, you know, frustrating to get this little cone. Which is going to be the top of our witch's hat. Now we want the bottom part of the cone not to be so wide because we don't want a big old wide cone here. We want something small because we want a big old brim. So we want some cone like that and the height's going to depend on how it, where it curls up, you know, and how, how, where the point is and where the, the, uh, where we decide to cut it to make it flat to fit on here. And I'll explain that as we go along. Okay, so you just want to take your, take a corner and then just bring it in and then just kind of roll it in and make, you know, like you're making a, a little, a little cone for, you know, some flowers or something. You're going to put some popcorn in there <laughs> and then just kind of reach in and grab that little corner right here and curl it in until you get this end to meet over here. And you don't want this to be too big, okay? So you're gonna just gonna reach in and keep curling it till you get it to a reasonable amount of, you know, a diameter. Okay, let me go ahead and measure right now so you get an idea. I've got almost five inches in diameter, so let me go ahead and compare that right here. Five inches. That gives me a nice big brim, so that's okay. So that's what you want to do. I'm going to make it just a little bit tighter because I want the top part here. I want a nice little point. So now I've got it where I want it, right there. And don't worry about this little corner here overlapping here because we're actually going to trim right here so that this is flat when we stand it up. And I'll show you in just a minute. So before we get to doing that, because we know that right here, is going to be a good edge. We're going to go ahead and put some glue there and we're going to use our hot glue gun and keep your hand in there and keep it in there holding your your little cone so it doesn't unravel on you. And then just reach in there and don't and don't worry about making this way too precise of a point because we're going to decorate the, the top of the hat here. Okay. So let's put some glue in there. As far in as we can. And then we're going to Hold down the felt, and it's it's hot, so you're gonna feel it in your in your ear of the hand while it's in there. You're going to feel the heat of it. Okay, so we wanted to be glued down all the way. So now we're gonna put more glue a little closer to the edge there. And at this point, don't worry about getting you know little strings of glue here because that this is gonna get trimmed off. You don't want to get any strings over here. You might, but try not to. Okay. So this is what we're doing. We've glued it down 
I don't know if you can see because of the color. Okay, see, right here, you can see the contrast of where it's be. It's got it, it got glued down right here, and here is the diameter. You can see the end here. If I take my finger, pass it through, you can see the little hole way at the tip, way in there. You can see the little light. So you can see that it does have a little bit of an opening, and that's okay. All right, let's get this glue gun out of the way. And then what we can do now is we can take our scissors and just trim. So rather than trying to create the cone and then trimming it, it's a whole lot better just to roll it up, glue it down, and then trim this off. Because when you cut it, you always have that chance of it kind of unroll, unraveling on you and then you don't have you know, the same look that you had before. So now that we have it like this, as you can see, it's not going to be flat on the table because this part right here is longer. And we want this to be straight up. So we're going to have to trim this part of the hat. So you're just going to have to kind of eyeball it and trim, go around. Okay, once you've done that, you hold it up like this, and if you see that it it goes slanted, as you can see mine slants that way, that means we have to trim a little bit more. But do a little bit at a time. Don't try to do a whole bunch. And just keep doing that till you get it to where, you know, you're fine, and it is all standing straight and all the edges are touching the table and right here I can see that this part right here is a little bit raised so I need to trim some more sorry some more off so I'm going to trim that a little bit because that seems to be the part where it's still too much and you just want to do this and do like I said a little bit at a time and now I'm going to put this here and I'm going to put my my coat on there and there you can see that that creates a really nice witch's hat. I'm going to turn it around because I'm not afraid to show you that I do have some glue showing right there. But like I said, we're going to cover that. Okay, so this is where you're going to decide how you want to decorate it. And now you can decide that you just don't want to use a candlestick and you want to have this just flat on the table and then just decorate the rest of the hat however you please. Okay, and you can use this hat in a wreath or, you know, um, in a pot, you don't want to put it in the pot, put some flowers around it. You can pretty much use this idea. You can use it to make miniature little hats, make a bunch of them, maybe use them as name card, like a name card on a table, maybe uh, make a bunch of them ahead of time and then buy smaller little ribbons, small little trinkets, and let your kids decorate them with just some, uh, like an Aileen's tacky glue or something that they can decorate their own little witch's hat and probably make just little tiny ones. So it's an easy, easy craft to keep them indoors during Halloween and have them do a little project. Okay, so anyway, um, this is our hat. So now I want to glue this down to this because I don't want it to move around. Now, I tried cutting it as best as I could so that it would be as flat as I could get it on here. It's obviously not perfect and that's okay because we're going to be using ribbon down here and some flowers to hide all of that. So don't worry. Which, by the way, I didn't mention that. I'm going to be using some flowers, little bushes from the Dollar Tree that I purchased. So I'll show you those in a minute. Okay, so now I'm going to put some glue around the edge here. I'm going to trim off a little bit here that I can see it's got a little bit of a jagged edge there. Okay. Try to keep yourself from doing way too much because you end up getting smaller and smaller each time. Okay. Hot glue sticks ready. Alright. Oh, let's push that over to the side because I don't want to drip any glue on it. I'm going to put glue and I'm not going to worry about, you know, this glue, like getting it on the, on the sides of it, because like I said, we're going to cover it with ribbon. Now, what you can do is you can just put glue on like half of it, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put glue on half of it because it dries pretty fast. We're going to move pretty fast and it's already drying on me. And try to find your center 
mark it with a chalk before, you know, ahead of time. Okay, so now that I've got it there, it'll stay on there. So now you got to go and glue around on the parts that where you didn't put any glue. Just lift it slightly and get in there and put glue. here because my glue is already getting cold and it didn't glue well so I'm going to glue it now. Okay. And again it doesn't have to be perfectly centered. If you want to have it centered then do all your little measuring. Like I said mark it with a chalk because then you can always come and wipe it off with a little damp towel. The same either using the fun foam but the chalk will wipe off of that too. Okay so that's what we want. And we'll just let that dry. You can see the glue and the reflections there. That's the wet glue. I like this sideways so you can see it uh, right there in the front there. This is going to be the back of my hat where this where it met and glued right here, the seam. Okay? So, as I was saying, we're going to cover this little hole, so don't worry about it. We're going to cover the whole hat and make it look really, really pretty. Pretty witch's hat. Okay, so my hat, I want to put it on this candlestick, and I'm just going to lift it up here. It's going to be out of uh, the uh, screen here, the hat is, but I'm just going to show you that I'm going to be putting it on top of this candlestick, like that. You can decide that you just want to put it flat onto the candlestick, and then that's all you have to do. Now, I'm going to be using some styrofoam, and I'm going to be using this little styrofoam ball because I don't want my hat to be flat on my candlestick. I kind of want it a little tilted, okay? I'm going to want to do a little bit of a tilt. And I'm going to want to cover this up with mesh, the deco mesh that I showed you. So if you saw my video last week where I did a skull on the candlesticks, uh, you will see that I used a little piece of styrofoam and then I stuck flowers into it. I'm sorry, the mesh into it. So uh, with the uh, chenille stem, and I'll show you that on this project as well. So I'm going to take this ball, like you don't have a ball, you could use like a half, like a scrap, because you still have room here where you can stick things into, okay? Or cut a piece from, you know, another scrap of uh, styrofoam. I'm not going to use that because I don't want to ruin that little disc. Uh, I thought about using the little half here and then just hot gluing it there. Uh, and then I don't have to use this ball over here, but I decided that, you know what, I'm going to use the ball because I'm going to glue it in as far as I can, and then I'm going to make a little opening right here in the middle so that it can actually kind of go over like I did with the skull last week. If you saw that, you, I did a little opening in the hat so it could slide over just, just a bit, okay? Not all the way, just a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to glue this down. Quickly, quickly before it dries. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna get that on there, and I will be back so that I can glue this onto here. Oh, but first let me do the little opening on the bottom. So anyway, let's see. You can use some a craft knife also, or a exacto knife to cut into it. And don't worry about this getting bent because we're gonna get it a little bit, uh, you know, kind of. Uh, I don't want it to be too stiff. Okay, so now I made a hole in there so I can go ahead and cut into it this way and that way. And obviously I'm not going to cut all the way. And I'm going to cut like an X. So then I have, and you can't see them because it's on against black, but if I go like this, like that, you can see the little piece like that, so I have little triangular pieces. So now I can stick my hand in there. And I'm gonna show you that if you put this on here, you can get it over the, the, the ball just a little bit, okay? So I need to cut it a little bit more. And I'd rather do a little bit at a time than cut, cut too much and then, uh, you know, the hole's too big and then it goes all the way into it. But I feel like, this is going to be just right, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift these little bits and just cut these little bits off. 
Doesn't have to be all the way, just a, just enough till they're out of the way. There, with a light like that, you can see, but it still cuts some more. Okay, and then now I can put my hand further in there. It fits in there, so I know this ball will fit. So now I can push this down and it actually fits a little bit better. But I want this part where the seam is in the back of the hat to be the part that is further down the back of my little styrofoam ball. So I just want to leave a little bit exposed. Well, not a little bit, but quite a bit of it exposed because I want to stick some uh, deco mesh into it. Okay, so I want my hat to be at an angle. And what we're going to do is we're going to put lots of glue all over the ball, like in this top half here, right here, you know, kind of angled back a little bit. We're going to put glue there so we can push the hat hole into that. Okay, let me move this uh, camera up so you can see a little bit better what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm back. So now I'm going to put glue, like I said. And I don't know exactly where the hat is going to touch. So I'm just going to put lots of glue. I'm going to a little, little bit of a gap here. I'm not going to push it all the way down. But I'm going to put as much glue as I can to make sure that the hat is touching. Now remember this seam is going to go in the back where the glue is the lowest. So just direct it there. And just push it in just a little bit. I want a little bit of space under here in the back where I can push some mesh. So that's good enough for me. Look at that. It almost looks like, you know, that's her little head, a little face. So, but I want my hat at an angle, everyone, okay? So this is you looking at it from the front and you're, you're looking at it at an angle rather than like that, it'll be like that. Okay, now, like I said, I don't want this to be too stiff, so I'm just gonna play with it a little bit and scr scrunch it, kind of break the stiffness of it. You don't have to do this if you don't want, you don't like the look. I just want it to look a little bit, just a little bit scraggly. So that's what I'm doing. Okay. See how that looks? Because I want it to be kind of, see how it looks? Like if this was the head, little face of the witch, her, the brim isn't perfect, you know, it's worn a little bit, she's been flying around, you know, doing her little mischievous things that she does, because she's a witch, going around doing spells, and she's gotten into some trouble, bumped into some trees and such, into windows that she thought she could go through, but her hat got scrunched up, so that's what we want, okay? Alright, so now, bef before we start decorating this, we're going to start preparing some mesh. And I've got my ruler here because I want to cut six inch pieces of mesh and I just want to cut a whole ton of them. And just to start off with, I'm going to guesstimate right now. I'm going to cut, let's see, one, two, three, and another three, three, and three times four is 12, and six is 18, and maybe another three, um, 21. I'm going to say I'm going to cut 20, 21 pieces of this mesh. So I'm going to cut as many as I can of the purple. And, you know, more or less six inches here. This happens to be, I think, five and a half inches wide. Well, actually, this is a six inch by five yards. So it says it's six inches. Yes, it is. Okay. So I'm going to cut... Uh, I know that I have enough of the black. I think I have more purple. Yes, I do. So you want to have at least two rolls of two colors so that you can have some contrast, okay? So that you can cut enough of uh, these little mesh pieces. Uh, you might not use the whole complete two rolls. Maybe you only need to use one, um, but um, you can always use the rest for another project. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut, I think I said 21 pieces. I want to have 21 bundles, so I'm going to cut 21 of the black and 21 of the purple, and then I'm going to do the same thing with the, the tulip, so maybe I'll do half and half, we'll see, cut that, and I shall be back so I can show you what I'm going to be doing with all those little pieces that I cut off. Okay, I'm back, and uh, I've decided to 
do a few of these first before I decide that I do need 21. I feel like maybe 21 is going to be too much because once I put my three little pieces together and my little bundles here, uh, they're kind of big and they take up a little bit more space. I was, when I was measuring in my head, kind of eyeballing it, I was just thinking about this much of a mesh piece to go into the styrofoam, but since I've tripled it pretty much here, the volume of these uh, little mesh piece, um, I think I'm going to need less. So here I've got, I think I've got 13 of these already done here, so i got two more of each. So i got 15 of each so far. So this is what I did. i got the little the pieces of tulle here, the mesh, and the, yeah, the two meshes. Okay, so let me show you how I put these together. And this is very easy. I've done it in other videos. Uh, there's different ways of doing it. This is the way that I like to do it. I take a a piece which kind of curls into itself here and then I just roll it up kind of a little tight curl like that put that in my finger like that to hold it while I grab the next piece because I want to add a black in there as well and keep the mesh and your pieces of tulle away from each other because the tulle will catch on to this and then you're they're struggling to pull them apart so make sure you keep them separate here's my black one that goes on top of my purple, back up between my fingers. I can get my tool now, but my tool, instead of rolling it up, I'm going to gather it at the middle here, the center, to create this kind of like a little bow. That goes on top of the black one, and I'm just kind of creating layers, purple, black, purple. And then I can take my three, three inch piece of chenille, and right in the middle, and then wrap it around to the back and then just twist and then twist my chenille ends together to make one piece like that. It's nice and firm to go into the styrofoam that I can poke into the styrofoam. Okay, so let me do it again. I grab my purple, you grab whatever colors you're going to do. So grab one of your pieces, roll it up like a little taquito, like a little curl like this. Take off your rings, by the way, because they catch on to stuff like that, too. And then now use another piece of mesh and roll it up. Put it right there. Oop, this one's getting caught to my shirt. Give me your tool. Gather it. Put it right on top. A piece of chenille. Put it right down the middle pinch everything together, grab them like that, and then just twist. Twist the bundle of mesh, so it'll tighten this way, and then you can twist your little ends together of the chenille to create a little stabbing point. That's what we're going to call it, a little stabbing point. Okay, so then we're going to take our hat, as you can see here, and we're going to go to the very back here. So take one of these Let's move these out of the way. Take one of these and grab it from the chenille stem. Reach under there, you know, right under there, and poke it. I'm going to put my hand underneath the ball here so I can push into the styrofoam. A little chenille right in there as far in as I can get it okay can you see that right there from like that from the side from the back so look that's been punctured in there and you can see how it is so that takes up a lot of space and initially I had counted like three of them would go right here but now I only just need one so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing, working my way around the front here on the edge, all the way to the back, and then this other space that's up here, I will then come in and fill it in, and if I have to put maybe one more up here, or two to fill in that little space, that's what I'm going to do. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, so I've got the camera now at basically the same eye level that I'm at so that you can see what I'm doing. Isn't she cute? Look at that. I mean, if you wanted to take the time and paint this and draw a little face on there and all you had to do was just put mesh here and towards the back, 
then that's all you need to do. Now, like I said, if you were going to put this on the table, of course, you're not working any, any of this underneath. You could put the mesh up here on the top after you put a ribbon. So just, uh, I'll explain that to you when we get to that point where we're decorating up here. But I want to also kind of keep in mind that this is the back right here. So I want to make sure that everything is kind of even. So I need another piece over here. And I've got to get these little ends together. Grab onto the ball so I make sure that I don't push it off and it becomes unglued and pops off. And then just poof up your mesh and your tool in there. See that? Isn't that pretty? I like how this, this tool, even though it's purple, very purple, it looks kind of blue in the camera. Yeah, it looks kind of bluish. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. But there you can see it from this angle so that you can see what I've put in there. And that almost looks like her little curls. So, like I said, you could paint this and make a little face on there if that's what you wanted. But I'm going to be displaying mine sideways, so that's not going to show. So I'm going to go ahead and continue along the lower portion of that ball with styrofoam. Oh, and I am going to also put some glue for my glue gun. It is about, it looks like it's three inches. Yeah, it's a three inch diameter ball of styrofoam in case you're wondering what that size is. And remember my brim, it was 12 by 12 and then I made it a circle. My hat is almost 12 inches in length, like that. And the diameter of the bottom part here is about seven inches if that helps any of you guys. It's nice. Look at that. And this is all the same as this over here, but because the brim here is pushing it down, up here it gets to get fluffy, but there is still a space there where I can see the white. See? So I want to fill in. I think I can push maybe three in there. So I'm going to push that one right in the middle of those two. Look, that filled it up real nice. Look at that. That's what I wanted to create. This little chenille poof. Okay, so let me get the other item. Okay, so I have two left over. That means I use 13 of these. Now, I have two. I could probably, yeah, you know what? Like right over on this side right here, I can push one on this side and fill it in. So she doesn't have any ball spots. <laughs> okay, push that in and my, I think I'm, am I pushing my, no. <laughs> I thought for a minute there that I was pushing on the hat too much that it was coming out glued, but no, it's still on there. Okay. All right. There we go. I got all 15 pieces in there and that looks so pretty. At least I think it looks really pretty. Okay, so that's that. So now we want to decorate the top of the hat. And this is where you might skip all of this because maybe you didn't put it on a candle. Maybe you did, but you put it flat and you're not going to use the styrofoam at all. So you're not doing this down here, but rather maybe you're going to do it on the top. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to get some ribbon. And I want to get the tool that I kind of want to drape off of it. Now, I was going to use the black tool that has the purple spider webs on it, but because I have this ribbon that has some white on it, I decided to do, I'm going to grab this one that has the silver spider webs to bring in like white. <laughs> see, you can see that it's got some webbings on it. It's really pretty. This is from the Dollar Tree. You can use whatever. I'm going to take some of this. Actually, I'm going to go like about that long from the tip of my hat right up here and have it hang down sort of like a you know like a princess hat would so I'm going to trim it right there okay 
So I'm going to take it back again like that. And then right here where it's at the fold, just gather it up like that. Get a chenille stem. Wrap it on there. And then what you're going to do is you're going to put some glue on there. And you're going to stick it in that little hole that you have at the very top of your hat. Right here. Because remember, it didn't close up enough for that little hole to be uh, closed up. So now you're going to put some glue and stick that right in there. Okay? Now, let's say you did it tight enough and you don't have a little hole and you don't have to worry about it. You can either skip this entirely, don't do this at all, or just uh, go ahead and put the chenille stem, tighten it as best as you can. Hopefully, maybe even use a silver one that'll match this, and then just or a black one, and then just trim it short and then you can just hot glue it onto the tip. Okay? But because I have that little hole, I'm going to stick it in there so it looks like this is coming out of the tip of the hat. Right in there. Okay? So then that's going to do a lot of covering of any glue. So that makes it kind of pretty. Let's put it back like that so you can see that. Now I want to take the same tool that I've got popping out of here and I kind of want to wrap it around the cone of the hat. So I'm going to take a little bit more and this is the pretty side, the glittery. So I'm going to gather it again. Get another piece of chenille stem. Wrap it around. Put some more glue and then stuff it in that same little hole before it's dry. Or do it before, actually, that you put that other one. Put some glue in there. Oh, oh, oops, oops, oops. There's still some space there where I can push this in. Yay! Just push it in. There we go. <laughs> there we go, like that. So before you put these little tails in, okay? Now I'm going to look at it and make sure that I've got the pretty side. Yep. And I'm going to wrap it around. So just wrap it around. And I don't want to spread this out like, you know, like I don't want to spread it out. I want to kind of crinkle to, you know, together, and then just bring it around as many times as I want, but I'm going to, like, crinkle it together, making sure the glittery part is what's showing. I don't know if I just tur turn it around like this is probably a better idea. Okay, yeah. All right, so now I know that it ends about right here so I can cut it right there just trim it off and I'll take another piece of chenille stem grab the end and wrap and then glue that end down right in there just glue it down and that's nice that all that glitter actually falls on, on the hat right here you could brush out some glitter if you want it. So now I'm just going to fix this so it kind of looks nice. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I like that. Like that. You don't have to do that, okay? If you don't want to, don't do that. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to take some ribbon, and I'm going to use this one. I like it with the stripes. And I'm going to go around the diameter of the brim. And I'm going to start back here where I have the seam. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put some glue down now that I'm here. Right there, the width of the ribbon. And go ahead and put that end down. Bring it around. And then I'm going to trim it so that it just overlaps. And then I can just trim any more. I'll just trim a little bit extra. Okay, and then you're going to bring this, and you're going to put glue on this end, and then bring that, and put it on top, and then just trim any excess. Okay, and it's going to cut just like a little bit of a crisscrossing, because it's not, it's not straight, you know, and then you've got a cone shape, so if you're going around where it gets smaller as you go up, you know, the thickness gets, you know, less. Okay, so now that I've done that, and I've glued the end there, I've got a little bit of a flap here, I can just trim it off. 
Okay, so this is where I'm saying that if you don't put these down here, you can put them at the top. Now let me pull one out that I didn't glue. One of these at the very top here. Let's say you've done these little bundles, but you didn't do the bottom part. You're not even putting it on a candlestick or you put it flat on a candlestick and there's no styrofoam or you're putting it on the table. Then you take these little bits and you you roll up the chenille into a little bundle like that, push that in there like that, and then put glue on that, and then start gluing it down to your hat right here, okay? So that's actually what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a few more little bundles because I like that. Okay, I'm going to put this one back where it was because it needs to cover that little ball spot. And I'm just going to cut that in half, and I should use my wire cutters, but I'm going to use my scissors. Okay. Let me do the bow first and put it on there and then I'll cut little chenille bits to do, I'll do more of these. Okay, so I just need a little bit of ribbon really. I don't want a lot. So I'm going to just get the end, pinch it, make a loop. This is about maybe three inches, so all together it's maybe six inches and then put it together. Always make sure that the pretty side of the ribbon is outside. So we want to make another loop, so we're going to twist it so that the pretty side is up. Make another little loop. I usually bring them up like this to measure, and then I know that I've got the same size. It's sort of like a gather and pinch, okay? And then I'm going to twist it again so I have the Again, I have the pretty side up when I make my next loop, and I just measure this one according to this one. Pinch and twist. Make another loop, and just make this one the same size as that. I think I'm going to make one more loop, make five loops, because I don't have very much of this left over. Okay, and I'm going to just pinch it right there, and then I'm going to trim off, leaving about you know, a little overlap spot, about an inch of ribbon. Um, yeah, an inch of ribbon right here. Then you're going to take your chenille stem and twist the ribbon so it tightens that way. And it tightens up all those, you know, layers of loops of ribbon. And then you'll have this like that. That doesn't matter whether you tie it all, all together or not or twist it together. It doesn't matter. What you want is just to make the bow nice and tight. So now just open up your loops. You can lay it flat on the table and fan out all your loops like that. Right? So you have them like this on your table. And I like to just push down the middle. And then you can just poof up, poof up, turn it, poof it, turn it, poof it, one more, poof it. So then you end up with a little bow like this. Okay? And then you can just push them up. And there you go. You have a little bow. And if you were going to tie this around something, you have a little chenille stem so you could tie it around a little basket handle or something, or even on a wire wreath or something. Uh, but I'm not going to be tying it. I'm just going to put these together like that for now. Save it. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to take these pieces here, and I'm going to fold the edges. And then from the fold to the to the top to upward to the edges, I'm gonna cut so that I have these little dovetails. This one kind of had a little bit extra fold on it. Okay, so you get these little dovetails. Okay, and then I'm just gonna grab it from the middle, give it a little bit of a twist, and then just make sure that the two pr printed sides are upward. Put a little bit of glue there. Oops, let me get some more hot glue. My goodness. I did say we were going to use a lot of hot glue. Okay, I am not putting those lights on my hat, if you'll notice. I haven't done that. I should have done that before I put this, this wrap around on here. But um, I don't think the lights are going to be bright enough for this project. So I'm not going to put them on. I'm going to fold this down and then just kind of crinkle it so, you know, um, the ribbons are kind of, you know, been bent a little bit and so forth. So that's how that's going to look. Let's get that out of the way so you can see. 
And then on top of that, right there, to cover all that, I can put my bow now. And I'm just going to put plenty of glue. Stick it right in there. Push down a little bit, like so. And I think I'm just going to make two bundles of the mesh. All right, so I was just talking all along and my battery decided to die on me. Well, it wasn't my battery, but just a timer on my camera. Um, it has like only a certain amount of time that I can record and then it stops and then I have to start it over. Anyway, um, I went ahead and I made the little mesh bundles and I put one on each side of my bow right there. So I made two of those and then these I trimmed them. See, I made these little, little, same little uh, dovetails, but I went like really high on it to kind of give it a little bit more, um, didn't feel so bulky and heavy up here. Now, I was saying uh, when I do my seasonal decorating, I always feel like less is more, but when I'm decorating for the holiday, more is perfect. Perfect is probably not even enough sometimes. So, okay, so now I've got these little... Uh, bushes here, these little bushes um, that I got from the Dollar Tree, some maple leaves, these are called global, globe, globe flowers I think, something like that. Anyway, um, I got these and then I got these, I think they're called bittersweet, so I'm just going to cut little pieces and like I said, the little ring, the little spider, I'm also going to cut, I'm going to cut off the plastic part, I'm using my good scissors for that, but I just did, so then I can have a little bit of a flatness where I can glue that on. So I put that right there, and then I have my little pumpkin also that I can put on it. So I'm going to take some of these leaves, and still got the glue here. I'm going to put it on the brim, like that. Okay. And I'm just going to cut the leaves as I need them, rather than cutting a whole bunch. and then Because I know I have a packet already cut leaves. I just don't know where I put them. And I have a ton ton of autumn leaves. Okay, let me get a few more. This red here is pretty green. Okay, let's push those out of the way. I'm going to put one kind of standing up right here. Now, I said that I was going to put this on, uh, I think I'm going to put this on my mantle because I did do the skull. And I have a skull on one side, so on the other side of my mantle, I'm going to put this. And I'm going to put it so that this is the front, rather than this being the front. I want this to show, even the back, would, what I would consider the back would be sort of the front, or a little bit tilted towards the front. So I want to decorate this part more, and I'm not going to worry too much about this. Now, if you're making these as centerpieces, and of course decorate the same that you would on this side over here. It doesn't have to be exactly the same, but you know, try to get it a little bit even. Uh, but I'm not going to worry about that because I'm going to use one side as a front. So now I can put glue on my pumpkin here. I can even bring this over to my little dining room table and put that as a centerpiece. I'm going to put the little pumpkin right there. Just glue, glue him there. And then I'm going to glue the spider way up here because it's been crawling upward on the hat. Just up here. See that? Right there. I just want it to be seen. There we go. And I'm going to put a few more leaves on this other side just so it doesn't look so bare back here. See, that's what I did. It's got a couple leaves there. And I think I'm going to put one more right there. But anyway, there we go so far. That's what I have. So uh, I can put more leaves if I want. I'm going to take some of these little flowers and I'm just going to pull them off like that. I'm not even going to bother trimming any of the stem. I guess I'll stand up for a little bit. Okay. And then I can just tuck these in here and there where I see like a little, a little spot on top of that mesh right there. Maybe one kind of tucked behind the pumpkin right here. Now I imagine if you didn't put it on the candlestick and it's flat on the table, you know, it's like this on the table, then you can just Put whatever you want on it, all the way around if you want. But I'm skipping this side, like I said, that's going to be the back side. And 
let me go ahead and put one kind of like on the other side so that you can kind of see it when you're looking at it like from the, if you're looking at it from the front on this side when I'm looking at it like that I can kind of see it peeking through back here just right about there that's just where I'm going to put it okay and I've got some left over I don't need, I don't need to use it all I'm going to take these off, just pull them off also. I don't need the stamp part and this little thick part. And then just reach in behind the leaf. Stick that in there. See? So let me put some on the other side just for the heck of it. Tuck underneath there. Let's see. And underneath the front of the flower over here, so it kind of goes the front of the run there. And I think that's good, you guys. Now, um, if I had, you know, put the lights on here, I would make sure that the the string where the battery pack is. Would either come down here to the counter or I would glue the, the battery pack in here somewhere under a leaf or something or put leaves over it where I can just reach and turn it on and off. So that's what you would do. But you know what? I decided that I don't need the lights on it. And mainly because I forgot, okay? <laughs> so now you know my secret. <laughs> you know the real truth. Okay, you guys. I just need to finish this. This was taking a long time. This is going to be a long video once again. But there we go. My hat is finished. I like to move things out of the way so that you can just see that. So there you go. I will pan the camera over it so that you can see it at the end of the video. And of course, there'll be a picture for the thumbnail. But that is it. I'm going to give myself a big old thumbs up. I hope that you two will give me a big old thumbs up for my witch's hat on a candlestick. Uh, make sure you leave a nice comment down below. Let me know what you think. Will you be replicating it? Will you just be doing just the hat part? Or will you do the whole thing? Uh, like I said, you could put this on a wreath if you wanted to. Or even do a floral arrangement. Make a floral arrangement out of this bottom part. Put some greenery coming down. Maybe a longer stick. Something taller. Make it really grand and elegant if you want. And that's it. Subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. And thank you to everyone who's been subscribing. Thank you very much for your support. It is very important that you also please give me a thumbs up. Hit that little like button, little thumbs up. Uh, it's very important for my videos. Uh, make sure you watch the ads as well. That's also important. Uh, and uh, share on your social medias. And hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified of when I put up my videos every Tuesday and every Friday. And once in a while, I have a weekend vlog. That's it, everyone. As always, enjoy.